my dudes, how you doing? I hope you're having a goddamn great day. We're going back to the championship and to a team that uh, we have been doing in, in the career mode. If you haven't seen it, check it out. Um, West Brom, under the likes of Carlos Corbran. I, I'm pretty sure that's how you pronounce his name. Corbran? Corbran? Either, neither here nor there. We're here to discuss his tactics, however. Of course, they tend to set out more frequently in a 4-2-3-1 shape, and it does sometimes change when they're looking to aggressively press the opposition. We will also go through those tactics, don't you worry, the 4-4-2 the flat, um, and again, this is what, when I say it's, it's more of a pressing shape and structure that you should potentially look to try and revert into when you are looking to be a bit more of the aggressor, looking to try and impose yourself very nicely on the opposition. Of course, we will be discussing all of this in this video, so if you can, hit that like button down below, subscribe if you are new, comment as well, Maybe even give you a rating out of 10, that would be absolutely appreciated. But, let's hop on straight to the goddamn video. Okay, so, taking a look at the formation, it is going to be a 4-2-3-1 wide. I've made no changes to it whatsoever. So, therefore, it will be one goalkeeper, two centre-backs, two full-backs, two DMs, one attacking midfielder, two wider midfielders, and then, of course, one striker. So, moving on to the tactics. Now, the tactical vision that I've said that I think replicates or best replicates the team's real style of play is Gagan pressing. Of course, we have seen under the likes of Carlos Corbin that they are very aggressive when out of possession, looking to work effortlessly to try and win the ball back nice and high up the field and obviously look to have that breakneck type fast paced approach to their gameplay. In terms of the defense, and of course this does go hand in hand with the tactical vision, but it is set to pressing after possession loss. You are going to look to try and set out in a, a very aggressive, you know, higher block you could say, looking to aggressively press the opposition's backline and their goalkeeper, forcing errors, forcing mistakes and looking to turn the ball over nice and high up the field. As for the team width, it is set to 60, now this does tend to stretch the team very effectively, have that man v man type system. But at the same time, with the team stretched to the, the level that it will be, it does allow for quite a few players to be in the passing lanes trying to intercept the, the build-up play from the opposition, which I think is very effective. As for the depth, it is set to 17. It is considered a high block, or a high line, I should say. Um, but it also does teeter on the edge of a mid-block at times. So I always tend to think it gets the best of both worlds. You don't overly get exposed with those balls in behind, but at the same time, you do have that nice high line that does help in and out of possession. In terms of the offense, the builder player is set to fast build up, and they do tend to, you know, win the ball back and then progress it nice and high up the field, with it, whether it's a long ball into the front line or into the 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 you know, area in behind the opposition's back line. They do tend to do that very nicely, working the ball very swiftly through the, the thirds of the field and looking to sometimes even progress it down the, the wider areas of the pitch. In terms of the chance creation, it is set to direct passing. Now, both of these elements do go hand in hand with the tactical vision, but more so with the direct passing, your forwards are more willing to make those runs in behind. And of course, Brandon Thomas Asante, Fellows, um, of course, Jed Wallace is slightly hindered when it comes to the, the, the pace, but more so your attackers they, they do have some, some really good pacey outlets to the game. So you want to try and use that to your team's advantage. In terms of the width, it is set to 70 again. You do tend to see quite a few attacks starting out wide and then arcing their way inside. And more so with the fullbacks also looking to overlap and be very involved in the attacking outlets. You're going to have quite a bit of your attack, you know, started from those wider regions of the field. So trying to work the ball and stretch the opposition as much as possible. Open up those little gaps and spaces between the lines. That's going to be a very effective tactic for you to use in order to try and, you know, score your goals. In terms of players in the box, I have set it to six, allowing for at least three players to be in and around that attacking area. Now, it does change and alter. Um, Jed Wallace does get into the box every now and then, or potentially he'll look to try and hang on the edge of the area with the, the likes of Swift, or maybe even one of your fullbacks breaking into that attacking third. As for the corners and the free kicks, as for always, it is set to four. Okay, so progressing on to the instructions. Palmer, Capri, as well as Barkley are all set to their base instructions. No major changes or requirements needed um, to change or alter their instructions in that manner. In terms of Townsend and Furlong, both of them are set to the same set of instructions. They are both marauding, bombing on, attacking fullbacks, looking to try and add to the offense. And in order to replicate their roles very effectively, they'll be set to join the attack, overlap, and of course, stick to position. I know this will be an, a very aggressive pressing system, but you don't want to be caught out with your fullbacks being out of position or being too far high and wide. So therefore, I think a more, more you know, basic approach of sticking to their position, not getting, again, not getting too far high and wide up the field, it does allow them to more or less protect themselves as well as this defensive line. As for your double pivots, we've got Jokoslu as well as Moat. Now, for Moat, he is a bit more of the, 
deep line playmaker collecting the ball off of the back line progressing it forward he often does play those line breaking passes in between the the defenders looking for those runners in behind so they they do have some you know similar traits in terms of their defensive behavior you want both of them picking up their their runners on the edge of the box trying to almost shield that back line in certain moments. The attacking support for Moat is set to a balanced approach, allowing him to be a bit more of that box-to-box -box player. And because he will be dropping in between the little pockets of space to collect the ball off of the goalkeeper for those restarts or potentially the, the centre-backs, you will see him also having that nice deeper role as well. So he can also link up very nice and high and wide with the likes of Swifty and Ghana and Wallace, but at the same time also showing support with the ball to play from back to front. The interceptions is set to normal with the positioning freedom being set to deep line playmaker of course and finally the defensive position is set to cover the wing now this is also to try and help support the fullbacks in those wider areas when required um but again the the main you know detail of, of the defensive area is going to be the tight mark so he will look to try and pick up those runners in and around your box as for the likes of his midfield counterpart Jokoslu he is also set to tight mark but stay back while attacking you often see this entire midfield you know progress nice and hard field be very involved in the attacking outlet as well and Jokoslu does have a slightly deeper natural position to the other two midfielders so that's why I've gone with him to stay back while attacking the interceptions is set to normal and then we will see him set to a stick to position for the positioning freedom. Um, you don't want him to be also be the deep line playmaker. He, it's not really his role. He's more so there to try and mop up in front of that back four and um, try and, you know, add a defensive layer to it, you could say. The defense positioning, speaking of the defense, is also set to cover the wing. Also looking to try and cover furlong when required. But again, the main priority of it is to have that tight marking approach, getting close to the opposition runners in and around your box. Okay, so onto your attacking midfield, of course, John Swift. He is set to come back on defense. Now, this helps him link up very nicely with Moat, of course, who will also be getting nice and hard the field. But at the same time, he can also provide a good extra defensive layer of protection. The support on crosses is set to a balanced approach, like I said. Every now and then, him and Wallace will, you know, interchange whether one gets in the box and the other stays on the on the edge. And more so, you want this to be on balance so you can replicate that role very effectively. The positioning freedom is set to free room, allowing him to pop pop up in the little half spaces, you know, work his way into those little, you know, inside channels, maybe even pulling players out of position. As for the interceptions, it is set to aggressive, and you often see that when they set out in their defensive block, which you will talk about, the front two of Swift and uh, uh, Brandon Thomas Asante, they, they take up a, a front two pair looking to press the opposition's goalkeeper in the back line and making sure that they are keeping them on, on their, their game as well as potentially forcing you know, mistakes and errors at the back. Okay, so moving on to your wider midfielders, of course, Dean Garner and Wallace. They have slightly different roles, and this is down to the personnel in those roles. So for Dean Garner, but more of an attacking direct approach to his his game out wide, of course. But most importantly, he's, he is also going to look to try and help out on the defensive end, looking to support the fullback in those wider areas. The chance creation, as well as the support runs, is set to get in behind and cut inside. You want him to be able to arc his runs into those more central areas, providing a bit more of a goal-scoring threat and positioning himself in those more you know, goal scoring positions um, when making those runs in behind. Of course, the likes of Moat, we spoke about it earlier. He does tend to, you know, play those, you, you know, those line breaking killer um, passes between the, the defensive um, areas of the field for the opposition. So you want those runners in behind for that specific purpose. And more so, Dean Garner provides a great outlet for that. The interceptions are set to normal with the support on crosses being set to get into the box again. You want Dean Garner in and around that attacking area waiting for those, you know, goal scoring opportunities to arrive in the box. As for the likes of Jed Wallace, now I tend to see Jed Wallace a bit more of a, of a wide playmaker that does, you know, drift inside. Almost a, a one matter type um, type of player, very creative outlet from that wider position. So again, for the defensive support, he is also going to be told to come back and help out as much as possible. But the chance creation and the support runs slightly different. Of course, the chance creation is set to cut inside, but the support runs is set to come short, looking to link up very nicely with the central midfielders, often opening up a lot of space down the wide right flank for Furlong to bomb on into that open space that obviously Wallace would essentially create for him with the abilities of him coming inside quite a bit. Often you do see him drop into that, you know, more central area of the field looking to try and facilitate and create for you know the attackers in and around him as for the interceptions just like with the left hand side it will be set to normal but the difference is here the support on crosses is set to balance allowing him to like i said earlier with the the john swift role he does interchange whether one gets in the box and the other you know stays on the edge and more so the balance approach does allow you to have this 
tandem of interchangeability between the two. Onto the, the striker, Brandon Thomas Asante, more so a winger, but he's been converted successfully into a striker. But you, you don't really want to lose that approach of, of what he can offer, drifting out wide, playing between the lines, also, you know, pulling players out of positions into those wider areas of the field, creating overloads, essentially. So for the support runs, it's set to balance, like I say, allowing him to drift all along the back line. But when push comes to shove, he can still take up that central you know, attacking area. The attacking runs is set to mixed. He's shown of late, especially the link up play, the hold up ability is there, but more so he is known for his pace in behind. So the mixed approach does allow him essentially to get the best and the most dynamic approach out of his game in FC24. The interceptions is set to aggressive and finally, the defensive support is set to come back on defense, looking to often drop a bit deeper, support the defense when required, but at the same time also, potentially pull players out of position from that opposition's back line or maybe even catch them off guard with the ability for him to drop off that back line every now and then. Okay, so if you do make rotations and the likes of Magia, Vyman and Fellows do come in, it's a, it's a personnel change. It's a, it's a different shift of, of the players who you have in that team. So things do change and alter ever so slightly. We'll start off with Magia. He'll be set to a bit more of a central striker type role. Of course, DK also has the same role. Very physical, very strong good strikers hold up play is supposed to be there so you want them to not really drift and run the channels as much they don't have that much pace as what you know brandon thomas asante does so stay central as well as be a target man have that hold up ability high up the field link up very nicely with the players in and around him the interceptions will still be set to aggressive you still require your strikers to press the opposition and the goalkeeper as much as possible of course, with the defensive support, you don't really want him always dropping off the back line. He can do so very effectively or sometimes hang up the field and then again, use his physicality to your team's advantage, link up play, try and start a potential counter-attack um, and be a potential outlet for those attacks. Of course, with Vyman, a natural striker that has obviously shifted into that more attacking midfielder type role, but you want him almost playing as that secondary striker. So you, you do see him often, you know, staying forward almost creating a 4-4-2 type shape in certain moments so the defensive support is here to stay forward it does allow him to also overlap the likes of the, the more natural number nine every now and then the support on crosses is here to get into the box you want him in those attacking areas as much as possible and the positioning freedom is here to stick to position you don't really require or want him popping up in little half spaces or drifting wide or more so play off of the shoulder of the natural nine break into that attacking area and potentially score the goals Obviously, with the interceptions, it is still going to be set to aggressive. You want them, again, pressing that opposition's back line. Okay, so onto the likes of Fellows. He obviously is a slightly different player to what Jed Wallace is. A bit more direct, a bit more pace to his game. Um, and you do tend to see that, see that with these instructions. Come back on defense, obviously looking to help support the fullback. That is a key element to the side. Um, but the chance creation and the support runs are set to get in behind and, of course, cut inside. Very similar to what Dian Garner does, arcing his runs in behind, using his pace to your team's advantage and looking to exploit them and more or less trying to position himself in the correct attacking areas. As for the interceptions, it is set to normal, but as well as, you know, Dian Garner, he's also going to be set to get into the box. You have that extra attacking flair. And more so with this role, um, you will have quite a few attackers in and around that uh, final third of the box. Okay, so onto the more pressing type shape that do set up in a 4-4-2 formation. And this obviously looks to try and, you know, clog the passing lanes, prevent those easy passes into the midfield, trying to stifle and cut out the opposition's, you know, build up play from back to front. And you do tend to see the, the number 10 and the number 9 take up those two cent or those two striker roles. Again, looking to try and press and go kind of go man to man with the opposition's back four system more times than not. So for the formation at hand, it is going to be a 4-4-2 flat, um, no, no DMs, it's more central midfielders and that does also get them nice and high up the field when it comes to that pressing nature. Um, but I've made no major changes to the positions whatsoever. So therefore it will be one goalkeeper, two centre backs, two full backs, two central midfielders, two wider midfielders and then of course two strikers. So look, having a look at the tactics, there are a few tweaks and changes to it. The tactical vision is still set to gag and pressing and this is more so um, a necessity with this formation, of course, it's a pressing formation that you're looking to try and implement with it. Um, the defensive style is still set to pressing after possession loss. The team width is still set to 60, but now we see the depth is now set to 80, and that's a much higher line, not really a defensive structure to revert into. So if you are looking to try and see out a game, you can use this, but 
also know that it's more of an offensive outlet than what it will be a, a defensive protection. Um, so you are looking to press and squeeze the team higher up the field, looking to create those turnover opportunities and more or less apply the pressure onto the opposition's back line as well as their, their defensive areas of the field. Um, the builder player is its fast build up and of course direct passing that goes hand in hand with the quick transition plays that you are trying to implement. The width is still set to 70, the players in the box are still set to 6 and of course the corners and the free kicks are still set to 4. So onto the instructions now, Palmer, Capri and Barty are still set to their base set of instructions with Townsend as well as Furlong still being set to basically the same. But the step-up approach is a necessity. Of course, you are looking to be a bit more assertive, a bit more aggressive with that press, and more so you do require your fullbacks this time to be nice and high, wide, and attacking the opposition's um, winger, essentially trying to win that ball back very effectively. So into your central midfield areas, both Jokoslu as well as Moat have the same roles and instructions. Both are told to stay back while attacking, stand the edge of the box, aggressive interceptions, cover the center, and then of course stick to position. You don't really want or require either or to drift into those wide areas and essentially expose the central parts of the pitch. It's going to be a very aggressive press that you are looking to implement, which is why aggressive interceptions is here to be on. And it's a very front-footed approach. You are looking to have a bit more bravery and add that to your game. I'm looking to aggressively win the ball back wherever it is on the field. Um, of course, as well, you want them to be those rotational players when they have position rotating it into those wide areas of the field or potentially looking for a killer ball into the two strikers. Onto your left and right midfielder, we do see a, a very similar set of roles and instructions for both. Um, of course, Dian Garner with a slightly differing role as well, trying to use his pace a bit more. So he is set to come back on defense, a balance with allowing him to drift in and out of those more central areas if required, or potentially allowing him to hug the touch lines and be a more natural winger. Of course, you want to try to use this pace to your team's advantage, so he's going to be told to get in behind, and then finally, aggressive interceptions and get into the box. As you'll see here for the likes of Wallace, again, a slightly differing role, but very similar. Come back on defense, a balance worth allowing him to also stay wide or potentially drift inside when required, but most importantly, he does tend to come a bit short to link up very nicely with Jokoslu and, and Moat and maybe even the strikers in certain moments. As for the interceptions, it is set to aggressive, and then of course he is going to be told and instructed to stay on the edge of the box, looking to try and facilitate on those, more or less those wider areas of the field, whipping in crosses, supplying cutbacks for the strikers. Okay, so moving on into your front line, we've got Brandon Thomas Asante as well as Swift. Um, Different roles, very different roles, but it gets the best out of them, I will say that. So for Thomas Asante, he's set to balance with, just like with before, get behind and then, and then of course aggressive interceptions. And then finally, the defensive support is set to basic, allowing him to sometimes hang up the field, be an outlet, or potentially drop a bit deeper and help support the defense. As for the likes of Swift, uh, obviously uh, not really a natural position for him. Um, of course, he is more of an attacking midfielder, so you want to try and replicate that creative type role, but slightly higher up the field. So the support runs is set to a balance with allowing him to often drift out of those central areas into the wider channels or, and then, of course, back into them. The attacking runs is set to a false nine. Now, this is where the creativity side comes in. He does tend to drop a bit deeper, link up nicely with the midfield and the, the wider players, get on the ball and look to also drive at the opposition, and he's very effective at doing so. The interceptions is set to aggressive obviously looking to try and implement that aggressive style of press and counter pressing system and then finally the defensive support is set to come back on defense looking to try and be a, an extra layer an extra you know body in between the lanes obviously looking to try and help support the defense when required and there you have it people that is how i would replicate carlos corbin's west brom tactics and fc24 if you have enjoyed it please don't be afraid hit the like button down below and if you haven't enjoyed it well take your like back hit the dislike button that's completely all right with me but if you have enjoyed it, please show some support for the channel. Hit the like button if you are new and you do like content like this. I produce it on a daily basis. So don't miss out. Subscribe. Hit the bell notifications. And you know what? Out of 10, I would give this a very decent 7.5. I think, look, some of these players, their overalls, they, they kind of let the, the whole system down. But in terms of the actual system and the functionality of it, it can very nicely, effectively work. It's, it's a very front-footed, attacking t uh, style of football that you will be looking to play. So, yeah, I, I think it's a very solid overall. You guys can let me know down below what you think, how you like the instructions. And of course, until the next time, I hope you have a damn great day. I'm out.